Welcome to the Authority of Love. I'm Greg Williams, and I thank you for joining us as every day I'm here on the broadcast or if you're listening on the podcast. I mentioned at the close of yesterday's program, referring back to our story of dealing with change in a positive way. Remember the mouse couple, right? Uh, and f- how, how hope and faith in the one who never changes strengthens and allows us to perse- persevere and grow our faith, hope, and love. Now, you can listen anytime at WJMM.com, upper right corner podcast. Click on that. Click on the Love and Lordship links, or you can go to loveandlordship.com, our website. You get a lot of things there, podcast articles, uh, videos, if you'd like to listen to those, uh, read those, or share them. Thank you for that. Um, You can also go directly to uh, our podcast page, which is loveandlordship.podbean.com, or Vimeo, our video page, vimeo.com forward slash love and lordship. You'll find many articles there. So I hope they are encouraging and challenging and a blessing to you. And you will share that with others as the Lord leads. Welcome to the the third Wednesday of 2023. And I want to keep wishing you a very happy and prosperous and joyous new year in the Lord. On yesterday's program, I shared a story and some related thoughts about change and how we can handle it. Today, as promised, we look at the beauty and power of hope and where that's found. Unfortunately, we look for it, as with many other things, in all the wrong places, but God has made it clear in his word where our hope is to be found and where it is to come from. As we continue with this new year on the authority of love, again, I remind you of our vision statement and mission statement for love and lordship. The vision is every love, every life life and relationship built on the love and lordship of Jesus Christ. And the mission is making disciples who make disciples in the love and lordship of Jesus Christ in every home, church, and beyond for his kingdom and glory. Now, usually I have a banner right back here, right? You're not seeing that because it's under repair, okay? So Lord willing, that'll be back with us next week. Um, On this wonderful Wednesday, let me begin with a scripture of great hope and blessing for all who are in Christ, and it's found in Ephesians 1.3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Now, with this verse as our, as our encouraging backdrop, we continue with what that verse just said, Christ, our only hope. Paul said in Philippians 1, 6, For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it into the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. As 2022 now truly fades in the background, we look forward to 2023. I think most of us, just as we did a year ago at the end of 2021, the beginning of 22. We're hoping and praying that COVID is finally gone or more under control. The economy would settle down. We'd get back to thriving, right? We were much more able to gather again this year as family and friends to worship, visit, shop, entertain without masks or mandates for the most part. We wish for a return to happier times and less stress, a return to quote, normal, unquote, I'm doing the air quotes for those on radio or podcast, whatever that means, right? To a large degree, thank the Lord, we have been able to do so. But because we are fallen human beings in a broken world, it never seems to be enough. We miss the peace and the hope because we're never content. If we stop and ponder all those things mentioned as desiring to return to normal, I think we'll find that, for the most part, it's the same every year, right? Take away masks and mandates, shutdowns, restrictions, elections, the economy, prices, etc., and we still end up pretty much the same. It was in 20 and 21 and 22, but it was eerily similar in 2019 and 18 and 17, sans COVID, but There was always something. You get the picture, right? There are always things that disrupt our plans, our pursuits, our peace. Jesus told us they would in John 16, 33. Take heart. In this world, you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. COVID just magnified these things. He also promised us a peace that was ours for the taking, but not the peace that most of us continually desire. 
It would not be the world's concept of peace in John 14, 27. My peace I will give to you, not as the world gives. The world's idea of peace is that everything goes smoothly and calmly, defined by what we want or desire. But we live in a sinful, broken, and troubled world that continues to deceive itself, each other, and ourselves. And then we seek for the ever-elusive calm, the peace, and the hope that comes with it. The peace that Christ gives is found only in Him in spite of the chaos, uncertainties, trials, losses, pain, and death. Yes, we can have peace even in the middle of all of these, even as we go through them. I pray that you know him because he offers the only real peace. All other so-called peace is only found when we manipulate or wait for the world and all its problems to go away or at least settle down momentarily. His peace is permanent. The only thing permanent about the peace of the world is that it's fleeting, always. He came to give us faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love, 1 Corinthians 13, 33, right? If we will learn to live in his love by faith and with hope, we will begin to know his peace. Let me say that again. If we will learn to live in his love by faith and with hope, we will begin to know his kind of peace. It is found when we choose to rejoice And give thanks in all things. Read Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Because we realize and live with him on the throne of our hearts and lives. That's what gratitude and giving thanks always does for us. It places him on the throne. That's what real love does. It is the only real love. 1 John 4, 19. We love only because he first loved us. And that's the only way to have real peace and hope. Here are four things you can do to live by faith, with hope, and in his love to know the peace only found in God through Christ. Number one, give thanks to God every day and in all things. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all things, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. If you want to know that faith, that hope, that love, that peace, That joy, there it is, right there. Does it say when things are going well or when it all turns out the way you want? It says in all things. Number two, spend time with God in his word and prayer. Do it because you know how much he loves you and you want to know him more and learn to worship him alone and love him with all you are. 2 Timothy 2.15 says his word is given for that reason. All of it's inspired, and it's for correction and reproof and instruction in righteousness, training in righteousness. Mark 12, 29 through 30 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. He alone is worthy of worship. How am I going to know that and know him if I don't spend time in his word and prayer and listening to him? Then it says, Love him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The first and greatest command. Why do we do that? Not just because we're told to, because that's the way we find out who he is. That's the way we love him and know him more. That's the way we live in his hope, peace, joy, and love. Number three, as you spend time with him and his word, ask him to show you who you are in Christ and teach you to love yourself as Christ has recreated you to be and to love. Ephesians 2.10 says, Don't you know that you're recreated in Christ as his workmanship to do the good works that he has prepared long before for you to do? That's what God has in store for you. You're not going to know that if you don't know him and allow him to show you who you are in Christ. Spend that time, word and prayer, and with him and asking and know that he is showing you that and then live it out by his grace, through faith, in his power. Number four, leading us to number four, I should say, as he teaches you who you are in Christ, this is where it comes from. Listen to this. It's in him. You learn to be content and confident in who he has made you to be, and then give of yourself to love others just as he loves you 
and as you love yourself. Mark 12, 31 is the second greatest command. Love others. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then John 13, 34, he says, after washing the disciples' feet and getting up and telling them about what real authority and real love was, he goes on through that. He builds on that, and and he's further down in that chapter as we know it. In verse 34 of John 13, he says this, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. That's powerful. You see, God literally has all the regrets of your yesterdays, the unknowns of your tomorrows, and whatever you may face today. By his grace, he can turn all of it for your good and for his glory. Romans 8, 28, that's what it literally means. When when Paul was writing the Romans, talking about his great love and how we are not condemned if we are walking with him in the Holy Spirit and not in our flesh. Don't think that you're not condemned if you continue to walk in the flesh because you are condemning yourself. Doesn't mean you can't be forgiven. Doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is not available to you, but you are choosing to willfully walk in sin and in the flesh. That means you're condemning yourself. But for those who walk not according to the flesh, according to the Spirit, he says all of that. He talks about how we cannot be separated by his love. Nothing can separate us from his love. And then he says this in Romans 8, 28. He actually says this before he says that, well, the last thing I just said. He says, don't you know that all things work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, are walking in the Spirit, not in the flesh. You can trust him every day. You can trust in him every day. Let me give you some food for thought again. Don't worry about yesterday or tomorrow. Leave them in God's hands and trust him. In so doing, you can live today and every day he gives you by faith in the peace, joy, hope, and love found only in Christ. Let me give you the action item again. Some of them are going to sound pretty familiar, okay? Read God's Word daily and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Spend time in prayer, asking and meditating on that Word. Number two, how is the past impacting today? What do you need to do to let it go? Number three, how is the future impacting today? What do you need to do to stop worrying? Number four, how can you live today in the hope of Christ, the peace, joy, and love of Christ in your life, your relationships, your work, even in your thoughts and your motives? This is where you will find his peace. And number five, make sure you're having a blessed new year in Christ, for this is what we have to look forward to. And he who sits on the throne said, behold, I am making all things new. And he said, write For these words are faithful and true. He was saying that to John, the apostle on the Isle of Patmos, exiled from humanity because of his faith. Choose the hope, peace, joy, and love found only in him, not the false pretenders of our circumstances or struggles of the world or in our fickle feelings. Here's a prayer that I pray will help you as you step out this new year in faith, not to not worry about the future and to live for him each day. Gracious Heavenly Father, I spend so much time regretting my past, worrying about my future, and failing to live for you today. Help me cast my yesterdays on you, leave my tomorrows for him, and live for him today. In his name, holy name of Jesus, I pray. Join us again tomorrow as we continue. Thanks for joining us. Invite family, friends, and loved ones. Thanks always for your prayers. Thanks to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser and Encounter. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.